Hey everybody, how you doing? So it is, what is today? I think I know the exact, the 13th, because the 14th is when the books start getting delivered. Came out a little bit this morning, and I talked about um, who I was going to have on me with, tonight with me, live, and so as soon as I, as soon as I see Tom on here, I'm going to have him join me on the, on the live stream, or live video here for your live stream. I'm not real technical, technically adept. We'll put it that way. I'm, I'm doing pretty good just to get a live uh, Facebook video going. Anyway, so today is uh, the day before the book goes. We Actually, I got a couple boxes of the books today. Um, ordered a bunch that was going to give, had some things I was going to give to people, and I don't know why, but they lost my order. <laughs> so... I have to order, I had to get online tonight and order more. Um, anyway, so even the author has to order his own books, right? Um, so as soon as I see Tom, let's see, yeah, as soon as I see Tom on here, I'll invite him up to uh, to join me. So tonight, what if the, the video we we'll talk about? Uh, I want to talk about removing roadblocks, and you know this is obviously this obviously it's the man up page, but. Um, this could be for men or women, and that's why I wanted to have Tom on here, because he's got something really, really cool um, that I want uh, I want you guys to hear about. Andrew Whipper. What's up, Whip? How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Um, Justin's on. Paul's, Paul's on. Cool. Thanks for joining us, guys. Night before, hopefully you guys, everybody starts getting their books. Now remember, if you get your book, you start reading it. Um... Hey, Tom is here. Let's bring Tom on camera. Book, um, and you start reading it. I want your feedback, and uh, good or bad. Uh, if you got bad feed, if you got feedback, not bad feedback, but if you got, if you've got in feedback, feed, feedback for me that you think could help me be better. That's the kind of feedback I'm looking for. So, um, bring it on. I got thick skin, soft heart and a thick skin. Right, that's what we're looking for, in in ourselves. Tom. Hey, it works. Works. This is this is pretty good. I'm telling everybody, I'm not um, adept at, at technology, and this is like actually worked like right when I was practicing. Uh, that's awesome. So super super cool to be on with you. I actually um, so I I just got home like less than five minutes ago, and I had to make a run down to our front desk just to see if my box of books came in. Because I had heard that uh, some of the some of the people that had ordered had already already gotten their books in, and I didn't yet. I was hoping I could hold them up here uh, right when the video started. <laughs> that bit, well, I've got this. Well, this, and I've, I've got. I didn't even bring my other book. I, I got a, a few of our books we ordered. The, we went up to our Barnes and Noble order, and like, the books were like not there. Oh, the order was misplaced or misdone or something. So I had to order more books today. <laughs> oh man that's exciting it is it is exciting it's it's uh it's kind of surreal actually it's, it's that point of um, all of this for the last almost a year now and then the push to get the book in people's hands and to try and um to try and get people to see that there was potential value in the book which for mm -hmm. you've done for me Tom, you know that's uh, with the, the review that you wrote and uh, the, the things that, that you're doing now for men. Uh, men. Very much so. so. Awesome. I appreciate that. People are probably trying to, are probably wondering why. Here's, here's the thing that I've had a, I've had a cleaner for years the last few years trying to trying to really do what I wanted to do um, talking to Tom, Tom launched something that was really kind of ingenious for me um, and the reason I, I like this is because anytime that that I can do anything to remove a roadblock you know all, all these areas in our life we're trying to do better in yeah better husband, take care of our, our bodies our health better um, 
anytime I can facilitate removing a roadblock for everybody, mm -hmm. it, it kind of goes in and out. So I'm doing a little combination of hearing and lip reading. <laughs> so, and it's, you know what? I guess that's the, the benefit of being out in the boonies. <laughs> Let me try. Let's see. Maybe if I unplug it, is that better? Yeah, actually, that so far that's better. Oh, well, that's interesting because it was just my phone being plugged in then. Oh, there we go. Nice. That was a quick fix. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. Um, so anyway, <laughs> so what I was saying is, there's anytime I can remove a roadblock or help guys remove a roadblock in whatever area of life that we're trying to improve on the less things in our way, the faster we can see results. Mm -hmm. What I want to ask you to, you guys, what has developed and is doing this, this, this process, this thing that we call vigor? That, that's correct. Yes. That's, I know that's what we call it in our group of guys. <laughs> is there anything else? Do you call it anything else? Uh, yeah. it's, that, that's that's an interesting place to start. The, so... We had, uh, obviously you were there, we had this Diamond Dudes uh, event where I, I did this talk on men's health and I titled that Talk Vigor. And, I, and the name just has, has kind of stuck. And so now the whole, yeah, the, the program is called Vigor and actually Justin Anderson put together a pretty sweet little logo to go along with it. And, and that, I, you know, I, I didn't intend at the beginning to have the whole thing be called that, but when you think about the word and the meaning behind it, you know, it, vigor is, you know, kind of pure health and fitness. And at the same time, it's got kind of a traditional word that doesn't get used much anymore. And so, you know, when you, when I think of manhood, um, I don't think of what manhood means in 2017, but I often go back to looking at what it's meant throughout history. And uh, back in the day, words like vigor were used much more often than they are today as, as well. So, uh, so yes, it's called the Vigor Online Training Program, and uh, you know that I, I'm not a marketing expert or anything like that, but uh, we'll we'll go with it. It's it's like it's it's directly from the King's English or something. <laughs> I, really, I, I, hearing something that isn't um, that isn't slang, that isn't just you know, is vernacular, if you will. I like yep. that. And I like that piece of, of looking back a little bit. No, so it's not that we're, we're trying to, and this is what I think even with the book and what you're describing there with vigor is it's not that we're trying to go back to what being a man used to be. Right. But it's expecting and learning from the past, but looking towards the future and moving forward. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. I lost you there. just not, not, not the last bit. I think that's the piece that, that we're after is that respecting yep. the yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I mean, even from a, a health and fitness standpoint, uh, today, you know, we're not as physically active as we were in the past with the jobs that we have. And so there, there was definitely some benefit in terms of manual labor based jobs. And you know, we don't, we don't have to get into the, obviously, people didn't live as long in the past either. And there were diseases and stuff that we don't want to mess with. But uh, Certainly, the sedentary lifestyle that we have today in 2017 is, uh, without a doubt, detrimental to our health. And so, you know, looking back at, at uh, again, historically, we've just been far more physically active. And that's what our bodies are made to do is to move and lift. And guys are genetically designed to be able to, you know, move more mass or lift heavier things. And uh, if, we don't, if we don't use that, we lose it. And there's a lot of health ramifications that come along with not using the, our bodies the way that they ought to be used. Isn't that the truth? I think one of my favorite sayings is, uh, um, if, you, uh, it, if you don't, not utilizing your health or not watching or taking care of or paying attention to your health is the best way to lose it. Yes. Yep. Yep. Without a doubt. Without a doubt.
the thing that the thing that really is i mean i've I've lifted weights since high school in some form or another and oh, the battery's on low i'm gonna try plugging this in again Hopefully <laughs> okay <laughs> my phone charge but who'd have thought that plugging it in would a little bit yeah kidding me no no well i, I mean it comes and goes so mm, that's 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 maddening <laughs> anyway, so Tom, just what does what does it mean when when when? Because we've had this discussion ourselves. Mm -hmm. You and and why why does this program remove the roadblocks? Okay, well, I mean, first of all, manning up in our health, like. I guess when I think of manning up in general, it's taking responsibility or taking ownership of whatever uh, whatever we can as men. And when it comes to our health, um, it's so easy to nowadays come up with excuses to not um, not be physically active. And uh, I think, unfortunately, a lot of times when when people go from um, you know, mediocre health to poor health, the, the perception is that you have to spend an enormous amount of time exercising, you have to be in the gym every day. Uh, and even the idea that health for guys means they've got to have a six pack and be super lean. And that's not the case at all. Um, but what it does in my opinion, what's necessary is to be consistent with at least four days a week of exercise. Uh, a lot of it's strength training because, again, that's what builds mobility and strength and um, mental fortitude. And there's all kinds of benefits we could get into. Um, but one of the thing, one of the things that um, is helpful, oftentimes for guys, is to participate in something where there's either competition or at least camaraderie. And if, we, if, if we're just kind of left alone, unless we're competing for something or we have some goal, like I'm gonna go into the gym because I'm gonna lose uh, 50 pounds because I've got this event or something like that, uh, it's a lot harder to stick with it consistently. So I, I, I can't even take credit for putting the Vigor program together uh, that was less right that kept saying, hey, Tom, you know, if you can put something together, I know there's a lot of guys that would do it. And uh, he kept nudging me, nudging me, and uh, finally I figured out how we could put something together. And um, in terms of the roadblocks, I mean, I, I, again, one of the big ones is feeling like you're either doing this all alone or maybe you don't know what you're doing. Uh, maybe it's been 20 years since you were in the gym. And uh, if that's the case, the cool thing is there's our Facebook group, which people get access to where we can do some education. But even the workouts themselves have workout videos. So if you don't know what an Anderson squat is or something like that, and that's on the workout for the day, there's a video to go along with it. Uh, so even though you might be training alone, uh, you aren't totally clueless as to what the exercises are and so on. I think one of the, one of the things that you touch really, um, here, what I'll do is plug, plug it when I talk, and then when you talk, I'll plug it. <laughs> that really that I really love about this program, because we've talked about how in the past, comparing yourself to others steals joy, right? Mm -hmm. The perfect version that people post on there, and we don't So it's really an unrealistic comparison, number one. Um, but what I do think, you know, I talk about in the book where as men, this, this piece of, competition it's looked at for whatever reason these days as oh competition is bad right but that competition the way i think uh myself and gary miller were talking about it just today or yesterday where so for you guys that don't know there's a test phase in this program um every six weeks or so we go through and we test ourselves and see how we've done based on where we were at the month before and uh there's this this piece of where there's someone that's close to me. I'm trying to st at least stay with them, to stay even mm -hmm. with them. 
given me a benchmark other than just myself. Um, it's given me that piece of a little bit of it, it, most of my competition is with me. But, you know, mm -hmm. I, that's where my biggest that's my biggest competition. But to have those other guys that are that are that are encouraging you, number one, mm -hmm. pushing you to do better than you would just if you were on your own in the gym, because we all know in the gym you get in there by yourself and it's like, okay. Oh, 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 I'm done. I, I quit. Yep, 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 yep. Absolutely. That's one of the biggest things for me. And it's not, and that's the thing that struck me. I thought this was just going to be a more of an exercise type thing, but there's there's so much more to what you're doing with these guys. And we're seeing guys that are engaging just incredibly, just massively. Mm -hmm. Doing things that were, weeks ago might, have been out, might have been outside their comfort zone. Right, right. What, what do you see in that with that piece? And what's, what's your goal? What, explain a little bit more to everybody how this all works together so it encompasses, I think, personally, all of health. Yeah, it, it, exactly. You know, it's easy to focus more on, you know, some people focus more on exercise, some focus just on nutrition, but... And, and obviously, those of us that are involved with Young Living Essential Oils, it's really easy to just focus on the use of Young Living Essential Oils as well. But it has to be all uh, all aspects. And you know, I I um, what I like about the way that the exercise programs are designed is that someone who has not trained in, like I said, in twenty years, they can still go through the training program and in in a lot of ways they're probably going to see more benefit than the person who's been consistent for the past 20 years because they're going to see more market improvements in strength and uh, performance and so on uh, what's also cool in in my opinion is that um, as they're making those improvements they're also gaining confidence in other ways and that's one of the things that uh, time and time again I've seen with strength training is that when people um, are consistent with the strength program and they can see measured results, which is why we do the testing about every six weeks, it gives them a level of confidence that they can accomplish other things outside of the gym as well. But every day that you go to the gym, you're, you're even faced with, you're faced with adversity. I mean, that's the whole point of lifting weights is that there's something that's pushing down on you uh, gravity is helping with that, but you have to push harder than you did the previous week or you don't really make results. And, uh, you know, even for myself, I, I'll tell you a quick little story. We, we were in uh, Michigan this past weekend for an event. Vanessa and I were both speaking at, uh, and we got in really late on Thursday night. Um, I think it was about 1130 by the time we got to our hotel. And then I wanted to make sure I got my, my workout in. Uh, because I've been trying to stay one week ahead of all of you in the Vigor group to make sure that the workouts are right, the app is right, and all of that. And so I had to do my full body strength workout Friday morning. The alarm went off at, at uh, 5.30, and I sat up on my elbow, and I just I was back and forth talking myself in, into going into the gym and not going to the gym. It was cold. Uh, it was a gym. Obviously, we weren't in we weren't from there, so I was going to go to a powerhouse and work out. Uh, I didn't want to wake up. Vanessa was another excuse that I had gone through my head. And it took four minutes, but after four minutes, I finally put my feet on the floor and I got up. And the, the one thing that, uh, even for me, that stood out the most was I'm like, I'm, I'm committed to this group. And if I don't do this workout, then I, I, I haven't tested it out before you guys go through it next week. And I know for, for you guys, I mean, there's there's been some like like Matt had told me he he went and worked out at like midnight one night just to make sure he got his workout in along with everyone else. So uh, that aspect of it has been super cool to see. Uh, but then, you know, we're, we're including lifestyle challenges each month. Uh, last month was to eat a low carb, high, high protein breakfast each day for 30 days. Today, uh, Ver I mean, this month, Varick wanted to do the no sugar challenge. And <laughs> What's that? That was Varick's fault? Yes. <laughs> yes. You can blame it on him. <laughs> uh, with the caveat that on Thanksgiving Day, it was a free day. So 
<laughs> you, can, you can still have some sugar or pie or whatever it might be on that day. Well, I think but, you know, that's, I love the fact that you, you talked something about something measured goals, measured results. Yeah. After the last, this last test, I, I evidently I was, I was a little more bubble than normal and I was yeah. talking talking to her and I was telling her, you know, I'm, my goal now is the thousand pound club. And okay, this is why or here's yeah. where I up and Gary beat me by five pounds and I was so upset. <laughs> even with him. And uh she says, Well how do you why you are she says, you notice what you're doing here? And I said, What do you mean? She said, I've never seen you this excited about lifting in the last two years. Wow. Well okay. And she said, you know I, she says, I think I know why it is. Do you know why it is? And I said, I don't know. I have no idea why. Um, because you're, you're, you're measuring your results, you're recording those results. Mm -hmm. And I can push myself before with my, with my trainer in person. Mm -hmm. I didn't, everything was yep. just, here's what you, he was telling me, here's what you do today. Yep. Yep. It was good. It kept me accountable. It was a different type of accountability, but now that I have the ability to see where I'm at and to say, mm -hmm. that's no higher than I was last time. Right. I need two and a half. Yeah. So, how important that is in, in, in any aspect of your life is that recording piece of Maxwell said, in order to get a great picture of where you're going to be tomorrow, you need an accurate picture of where you are today. Yes. Yes. That's so key. That's really one of the things I really love about this. Um, and, and just the camaraderie that the guys have. Houston. Mm -hmm. If, if I know everybody else is posting what they're doing, I'm not, not going to explain to, because these guys, the, the beautiful thing about it is there isn't a guy in there that's not going to hold one of the other guys accountable and say, hey, right. well, what, what is your doing? What, you sign them off or what? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, the recording aspect of it is super important. And, and I've actually, uh, since I was in college, I, I, I mean, for a while, I had all of my training notebooks for years and years and years. And, and, and then... Prior to uh, launching Vigor, I was using an online app uh, for the past few years for recording my workouts. But that's so important to, because even if, if you go in and you're tired, you're kind of worn out, you're not in the best, best mood, and the workout, the exercises are the same in this week as they were last week, and you have a record of what you did, you know that you can beat it. And even if you're not feeling it, you, you got to push yourself that last little bit. So that's a big, big deal. And then you'd also mention like the – you know, the, the competition part of it too. What I love about our group is that there's a variety of people that, who are at different, uh, different stages. So some are kind of novices and some are more advanced in terms of their experience with lifting. And sometimes it, like, like if, if someone who's totally brand new compares themselves with someone who's been doing this their entire life, the gap can be too much to, to feel inspired but there's there's enough of a uh, of a spread amongst all of us that there's the one, that one person that you can compare yourself against or compete against, and uh, it's it it's they're out there just enough to to have you push yourself, but not so much that you're like oh I could I could never do that or something like that. So that's been fun. It's it's almost the exact opposite of the meathead mentality. Yes. But understands that each one of us started in the same none of us started out as an Arnold none of us started, right. one of us started out with the bar and throwing a 35 on each side going oh, I hope I can do this yes yes absolutely the piece where you have all these different guys that are willing to pour into each other and that's that's a, this whole piece of manning up not only with health but with with friendships with mm -hmm. friendship guys Okay, so let's just be honest. The Vigor program isn't for just guys, is it? No. no. Like to take control of their health. Right? right, right. Gals, if you're on this, I know there's plenty of gals that get on this and can I... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, my grandfather was speaking there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> but if so, if, there, if there's gals out there, women out there that would like it, we'll get you it below. Tom will get it to me. We'll, I'll get the information from Tom. He'll say it on here, but we'll also have it um, below so you can you can sign up for it. Mm -hmm. 
water when he that's what he can do. Um, but well, since we're there, we're on that kind of that topic right now, I guess. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Big Ed, big question, wants to check this out a little bit more and maybe try it out. And then, um, what what is the thing you're doing for November? Okay, so um, for November, uh, it, well, yeah, number one, if if you register, especially uh, specific, it, well, if you register in November, um, I I will give you a copy of the Man Up book. So, uh, nice little bonus there for you. Hopefully, everyone who's listening has already ordered a copy, but you can have another copy that you can give away as a gift then, or keep one in your truck or car or whatever, um, so, so you always have an extra. So register for Vigor this month for the first time, and I'll give you, I give you a Man Up book, a copy of that from Scott. And then uh, to, to register, you just go to TomNicola.com, T-O-M-N-I-K-K-O-L-A dot com and click on the online training and you'll find uh, the vigor program right there it's 49 a month uh, to join and again that includes the training program which is delivered through an app uh, the app then has the, the recommended uh, exercise exercises the um, videos if you're not familiar with some what some of those movements are it will track your uh, previous workouts so that you can compare against those from one workout to the next, but then you also get access to the Facebook group. Uh, and of course, the Facebook group's an opportunity to ask other questions outside of exercise pertaining to your lifestyle, nutrition, uh, supplementation. Of course, we talk about Young Living Essential Oils in there as well, which are an important part of your program. Uh, so that's, that's what's necessary to get started. Um, I will say that right now, uh, it's all guys, but as Scott mentioned, women are certainly welcome to join in. Uh, the, the block of training that we're doing right now is three days of, I, I, I'm and women, of course, if you're interested in this, it doesn't mean you get big and bulky. Uh, women need to build lean mass just as much as men do. Uh, and then one day of strength, so there'll be a full body strength workout. Uh, there's a, actually an option for a five day training program as well, but most of the guys are doing four days per week. The reason that I believe four days is important is it's more days exercising than days that you don't. And if you want this to be a lifelong habit, uh, I think that that's super important, but it definitely doesn't require six or seven days in the gym unless you really wanted to do that. Uh, but it, you know, I, I kind of alluded to this, and I'll just make mention of it again, that I, what I see as the big benefit in this training program is that it will be um, you know, a year-round thing. It doesn't mean you're committed to be in it year-round, but my hope is that you get started and you want to stick with it. And even a, a greater benefit than the physical benefit is the mental benefit of resistance training and making progress. And you know, another word that doesn't get used too much nowadays is fortitude. Uh, mental fortitude, and that's just this this ability to overcome adversity. Uh, and I, you know what I see, and I know Scott's mentioned, you know, kind of talked about a little bit about this in the book as well. Is that today? I, I just feel like in a lot of ways we're getting too soft. I mean, life life is way. I don't want to say it's too easy. I, I like life how it is, certainly, but compared to what we uh, are capable of handling in terms of challenges, you know, if, if, uh, if, if the phone doesn't work one day, it's like we, we lose our stuff because uh -huh. it's the end of the world. Or if, if the computer is running a little bit too slow to bring up a web page, we get frustrated. And, you know, there, there's just these little you could call them third world problems if you wanted to or whatever but um, I believe that one of the things that we can do as a, a daily or weekly discipline is participate in, in resistance training and handle adversity in the gym which will translate to a greater ability to handle adversity in life relationships business finances 
so that we don't just crumble when a little bit of stress comes our way. You know, that's, it's funny you, you mentioned that because one of the things that we do talk about and I feel very strongly about in the book is that just like, so when we, when we work out in the gym, and one of the reasons you change our program for us on a regular basis is because our body adapts, right? Yep. We, yep. we get used to that and, it becomes, and if we keep doing the same thing, we're never going to grow. Correct. And so when, when you're doing, just by doing this gym thing, the, you know, I'll call it the gym thing, because um, for some people it's not their thing, but just by doing that and pushing through, whether it's lifestyle changes for what you eat along with it, mm-hmm. or how much you're exercising, or um, whether or not you're pushing your family to do it alongside of you and, and changing the lifestyle, the health choices of your family, um, those things over time, like lifting, those that the, the ability to push through the harder things gets easier with each success that you have the longer mm-hmm. you do it. Yep. Uh, you know, it's been what almost two and a half, three years of working out consistently again for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm to the point now where I do not want to miss it. I do not want to miss mm-hmm. the gym. If I do miss it, I'm upset because I yep. know how good I feel when I hit it. Yep. Uh, and it's so for me to say, and I know you feel the same way, but by doing this, it translates into the increased fortitude in every other aspect of your life mm-hmm. people are like well, hot what it's just by doing something that challenges you here it makes you less afraid less trepidatious to attack or try something that may challenge you in another area of your life yes yes absolutely absolutely and you know you're, you're like like i know for you you're training you're you're usually training at 4 30 in the morning 4 30 <laughs> or 5 o'clock and so, you know, something as simple as when somebody comes at you and says, oh, I, you know, I don't have time for this other thing that I know would benefit me. Well, you just, you got to make time. And, you know, I, I, I'm sure there's not a day that goes by where it wouldn't feel great to not get up. You know, oh. it, it would feel good to sleep in. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that that's... If, if we do what's comfortable, and, and, and I don't want to get cliche about this, but if we're always doing what's comfortable or, you know, we're falling back on excuses, uh, it's, it's, we're going to develop those patterns for everything that we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's why I, I just, I love, uh, I love resistance training because, um, and that's not to say cardio doesn't have its place and stuff, but what I love about um, the type of programming that we're doing is that you do have to work harder every week than you did the week before. And if you can apply that, those, that idea or those principles uh, in one area of your life for an hour, four times per week, it's likely they're going to translate to everything else that you're doing. Definitely. No. So I'm going to ask you a question. And, and I, mean, I think I, I'm, I, I know the answer, but I'm going to put you on the spot anyway. <laughs> so do you, does, does Vanessa set out any of your supplements or things that you need to take every day? <laughs> Absolutely not. No <laughs> way. And, uh, <laughs> so what, what, why, why is it, do you think that as men, there's a good portion? I mean, okay, I used to be guilty of it when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I think part, well, I'll let you speak first because I've got an idea of where it comes from. Uh, but so why do you think it is that as men, we'll take ownership of things we have, but yet that piece of, I'm going to take ownership of what I'm putting in my body myself. Yeah. Why is that lacking or what, how can this help it? Well, uh, why is it lacking? I think sometimes we, uh, one, it could be denial, like, uh, you know, things really aren't as bad as, as they, as my wife is making them out to be, or I, I'm just fine. I, and that's really easy, especially because people are so unhealthy and out of shape nowadays. If we compare ourselves to our friends, it's easy to say, well, I'm not as bad as so-and-so. And you know, they're, you know, they seem like they're not dying, which yeah. is a pretty low standard to, <laughs> to set. Like they're, they're, they're not dead. Uh, but it, you know, it's easy to have some of that comparison take place. Uh, I also, I was thinking about this today, just the reality that like, like guys, um, and again, this is generalizing. So that if some guy isn't like this, no big deal, but guys like their toys, guys like their, their stuff. Uh, and 
oftentimes part of the reason they see so much value in it is that they worked hard to be able to buy it. And we're given this body, you know, until we actually have to go and pay a bunch of money for healthcare problems because we're sick, we're not technically paying for this. We, you know, we're born and we grow up and we've got this thing um, in a lot of ways for free. And it's not until there's a crisis in our health that costs a bunch that now we're like, oh, okay, you know, I better take care of myself. You know, if, if somebody has to have their hips replaced or something and they're, they're having to pay out of pocket a bunch of money to, for those hips, there's probably a better chance they're going to take care of those hips after the fact than when that hip was free before and they could have taken care of it all along. That's just, you know, my opinion, but. See, the, that's why I love talking to you because I learn something every time we sit down and talk. Because <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 it strikes true so very deeply to me because when I had my clinic, I would do once a month, I'd, I'd pick a patient to do benevolence care for, meaning they couldn't afford it and I'd just give my care away. Yep. Every time I did that, 99.9% .9 of them never followed through on their care. It was free. Yeah. There yeah. was no value associated with that care. If I charged uh, a buck or two bucks per visit, there yeah. was a value associated with it, and they became like 80% more compliant with their care. Yeah. And so, it's, yeah. so what you just said is it's the value piece of what we value, what we, where we place that value on our health, on our bodies, mm -hmm. on the health of our mind. Yeah. And like you said, if we, we were given it for free, until we have to pay a price – whether that mm -hmm. price is, we've put a bunch of work into working out for the last two years. And now we've, we've paid the price to get something. Now I'm going to yep. maintain it. I want yep. this. I want yes. to keep this. Yeah. Um, I, I think that, I think it's, I think it's a, that was absolutely worth every, every <laughs> bit of this call <laughs> just for that one piece right there. So thank oh, you. Oh, thank you. Again, educating me once again. That's see, guys. <laughs> now let me, let me, let me say something here, guys. So I talk about this man up piece and friendship because we're, tonight we're talking about the manning up in your health. But having men like this in your life that are going to that are going to cause you to think a little bit different, to that are willing to educate, pour into you their thoughts, um, that are are willing to just to to be there alongside of you, like Tom is. That is one of the most immeasurable parts of value to to friendship and to mm -hmm. helping people move forward in life so if i could give you one piece of advice guys surround yourself with people better than you uh we were talking the other i can't remember who i was talking to the other night oh it was it our, our, my emerging leaders group in church was it that or where no no it wasn't it was a group of guys we were with sorry i'm i've got so many groups going on <laughs> But it was talking about, you know, the, the old, you're the average of the five people you hang around the, the most, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And, and it said, if you're always the one that's on top, like the most knowledgeable, the most educated, the most everything, yep. you're in the wrong group. Right. You want to always try and be down here and towards the bottom where everybody else is pouring into you. Um, that doesn't always happen, but that's the type of thing that guys, if I have one piece of advice, Get these types of men in your life. It's gonna, it'll be absolutely invaluable to you if, if you're reading this book and you're going through it trying to become better, a, the best version of yourself that you can be. Mm -hmm. um, this type of friendship is invaluable to me. So thank you again, Tom. I mean, no, thank you. I don't know. <laughs> you just, go ahead. Well, I was going to say your, your comment about surrounding yourself too is – they're like again we're talking about one area of which is health and fitness and you know there's there's the spiritual part of it there's the relationship part of it there's uh i mean even something like like with marriage if guys hang out with a bunch of guys that talk down about their wives and complain about their wives and stuff well it won't be long before that's how you end up talking about your wife too and what i love about uh my friendship with you and some of the other guys that i've uh, I've gotten to know over the past couple of years is that there's areas, uh, there's other areas where I'm like, I'm, I'm down here and there's people up here and, you know, we, we sort of balance each other out in that respect as well. So I, 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 um, I was listening to a podcast last week and, 
one of the ideas that kind of came out of that, they didn't say it this way exactly, but uh, it's that if, ev if everybody you surround yourself believes what you believe, then you're probably not surrounding yourself with the right people. Exactly. And what, what I, it, it actually hasn't been until these, again, these past couple of years, most of my adult life, I, I didn't have guys that I, you know, invested time with or hung out with or um, spent much time with at all. And, and I, if I could go back to my younger years, I would have changed that and not found like drinking buddies but built relationships with good, strong men with strong values and principles and stuff, uh, just like you have, Scott. So uh, wow. anyway. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Well, so where, where do people um, go if they, if they want to do the vigor? If they say, you know what, this sounds like something I want to do. What, where do they go to, to sign up to find out more about it? So TomNicola.com, and then just click on the online training link there. And that so will... That's T-O-M-N-I-K-K-O-L-A.com? Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. You got it. And then again, anyone who uh, registers in November for the first time, I'll send you a copy of Scott's awesome new book launching tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, like I said, everybody's already ordered their copy or copies of it. I think I have... I can't remember if it was 10 or 20 coming. Uh, so I, like I said, I was hoping that box would show up uh, and I'd be able to show it off here. I did, it's, it's hard to see in the, with the light right now, but I, I found the most orange shirt that I could in the closet. It's a little bit red, but I thought, <laughs> uh, you know, if I'm, if I'm gonna be on the Man Up uh, Facebook, Facebook Live, I better find well, something kind of orange. So there's, uh, I, I, can you see that okay? Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, so uh, Nick, remember Nick Johnson, don't you? Yes. Yeah, so he made that. It's metal. That is awesome. Yeah, so that, and that's, that's got the red going right now, so you're good with red. All right, all right, very cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom, man, I can't thank you enough. Is there anything else you'd like to, so any piece, any other last piece of advice that you can think of or would like to give the men when it, when it, in regards to, that whole manning up piece in our health, what that, whatever, the, whatever area of our health that, that is for you. Yeah. I, I, the biggest thing I, I believe is that uh, we have to, men ought to be strong in all areas of their life. Doesn't mean that they're jerk, it's kind of strong, but strong in their will, strong in their determination, strong in their, their, physical abilities as well. And strong doesn't mean guy has to be able to deadlift 600 pounds to be impressive, but strong according to his own abilities. And I feel so bad when I, when I, when I see guys that are, you know, getting into their fifties, sixties and seventies and they're, you can just see that it, it hurts to walk. It hurts to move. Their body is falling apart. And sometimes that's outside of their control. So certainly, you know, there's, there's reasons why we lose our health that we have no control over. Yeah. But I also believe that for most people, our health is the one thing that we have the most control over, over everything in our life. Like we can't control the necessarily the future. We can't control what happens in our business. We can't control what happens in our relationship because there's two people in that. But we do have control over what we put in our mouth and how much we move and when we go to sleep and all of those aspects related to health. And so if there's one thing you, that you want to uh, feel like you have control over on a daily basis as you get into older years, it is the ability to, to move and be healthy. And I, the, the, the other thing that's, that I feel so strong about is you know, when men are getting into their 60s and 70s and 80s, that's, those are the years when they can just exude wisdom to all of us. Uh, but if they're not healthy physically, they're not going to be as healthy mentally. And so when we're in our 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s, we not only have to, to grow as individuals mentally, but we have to keep ourselves strong. And the, the one other thing that I, I like to use to paint a picture is that 
uh, the muscle that you develop in your younger years is quality of life insurance for your later years. And so the more muscle you have now, the more that you can lose later on and still be healthy. But there gets to be a point when your muscle loss reaches this threshold where all of a sudden your body just starts falling apart and sarcopenia and osteopenia and all of these things start to, uh, to happen. So fortunately, in a lot of ways, we can prevent that from happening with a good program. And, and I believe not only that will the exercise itself be helpful, but getting uh, connected to the guys in this group will certainly pay off in many ways beyond just the physical benefit. Well, huge. I mean, you did what you said there, and then I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna quit because I, I can't I can't improve on what you said. But I want people <laughs> to think about um, when when people have the the quote unquote normal job and they're working till they retire when they're 65, and and they're 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 hoping hoping and praying by the time they retire that they're gonna have enough physical agility enough not even strength but just physical agility and yep. ability and mobility to yep. enjoy retirement whatever that retirement looks like for them whether it's traveling with their wife and seeing different countries mm -hmm. or whether it's with woodworking in their shop or whatever that looks like yeah but yet they they don't take well enough care of themselves up to that point to now when they do are able to finally retire and supposedly enjoy life yep they're physically unable to do it right right and I think yep. that's one of the biggest things that that this offers us. We all, like you said, we all have that opportunity. We don't have much control over anything, but we do have control over whether or not we're gonna we're gonna get our skinny white butts out of the bed, <laughs> yep, and into the gym. Yep, that is a absolutely we, that that is a decision that we're gonna make and that we have control over. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Tommy, as always, thank you. Um, it was my pleasure. And, and let me just take a minute and, you know, I, I want to acknowledge uh, you, Scott, because what you've done with right, with stepping outside of what was your comfort zone and, and putting that book and all and the transparency, the authenticity, just opening your, your heart and your, your past up in the book, I think is awesome. Uh, you know, I, I think this is just the beginning of something for you. And, you know, I, I know for those of us who know you, we all look up to you in so many ways as this wise uh, leader and, and man, you know, manly man. Um, that that the, the big thing that to, to me is that you're, you're just you. You know, you're the, Vanessa often says this to women to be, um, the best version of themselves that they can. And I think that's good advice for guys as well. And there's, you know, when I, when I, like, even if I'm writing a blog post or something like that about guys, every time an example comes to mind, the example is you. So thank you for writing the book. Thank you for sharing your heart. Thank you for everything that you're doing to, uh, to help other men uh, to man up. So I can't wait to get that shipment tomorrow. And I, I just, uh, I really value our relationship, our friendship. And uh, I know many, many guys, thousands of guys are about to be blessed in big ways with what you've written. Well, I tell you what, whoever says, if anybody ever says that men don't have emotions after hearing that, um, I, I have them. So thank you, Tom. It, it, You're welcome. It, it, it means, the, means the world to me because it was scary as hell writing this book and putting it out there. I did not want to do it, but we did it. And yep. so thank you. Appreciate it, man. My pleasure. You have a good night. Everybody, you all have a good night. I'll tell you what, here's what's going to happen. We're actually starting the Man Up podcast. Oh, awesome. So That is super cool. So Justin and I are going to be doing, doing a little bit of uh, musing from the shop, from the man cave up here a couple times a month. Um, and we're going to be having wow. guests. So if you guys would love to hear Tom come back on in a future podcast where it's just men talking about stuff for men um, in life, uh, comment down below. And uh, we're going to start this week, or not this week, but next week, with, uh, with getting the first pilot stuff going and running and getting our feet wet. So right on. It, does, it doesn't stop with just the book. <laughs> that's awesome. Can't wait to hear more. All right, guys. Thanks, Tom. Have a great night. Tell Vanessa hi, everybody. Yes. Thank Have you, Scott. Night.
I hope you get your books. Remember, when you get your books, be honest with me. Tell me what you think. Tell me where I can improve. And hopefully, you even if you take one thing, here's, here's, here's my goal with, with this book, simply this, that it starts a conversation. It starts a conversation between men and their wives, men and their kids, men and other men, and men in a higher power. As long as the conversation starts, change can happen. Without a conversation starting, change can't happen. Mm -hmm. So I don't know everything, but I do know we need to start conversations. Love that. Thanks, guys. Love that. Y'all have a good night. Bye. See ya.